Thanks, John. You pronounced it perfectly. <laughs> I know you were practicing backstage. So thank you, everyone, for joining us right after the lunch slot. And thanks very much to DAPCON for having us here. Today, I'm going to talk about driving mass adoption in DeFi. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I founded Enzyme a few years ago in 2016, which was a decentralized asset management protocol. And after it decentralized, I founded Avantgarde Finance. Um, and my team still performs some core development to Enzyme. But more recently, we also uh, started an asset management arm. And we look after DAO treasuries, as well as uh, having launched the first ever regulated and decentralized um, on-chain asset management platform. So I'm going to start off the presentation with a, a, a sort of bold, maybe daring claim, um, and say that I believe that DeFi is not as composable and interoperable as people like to say it is. Um, I agree that it is composable with the rest of DeFi to an extent. Um, but when you think about uh, DeFi being composable with the rest of the world, I think we're just not there. Um, so in today's presentation, I'm going to start off by telling you a little bit about the state of DeFi today and why I think it's not interoperable with the rest of the world by showcasing some examples. Um, and then I'll tell you a little bit about the work we've done with Enzyme over the last few years to, inter com to, to aggregate DeFi with DeFi. Um, but recently, we've recognized that that's not enough. If we want to bring DeFi to the masses, we also have to think about the tools that we need to do that. So um, see if this works. Yeah. So I think, you know, when I think about the state of DeFi today, I think we've been, built brilliant micro solutions for micro problems in finance. So when you look at stable coins, we've completely revolutionized the payments industry. When you look at protocols like Aave, Compound, Maker, we've completely changed how borrowing and lending is done. We've, uh, when you look at you know, protocols like Kyber, Zero X, Paraswap, we've completely revolutionized uh, trading and made it peer-to-peer. -peer. And Uniswap, Curve, other protocols, similar, Balancer, have made it possible for anyone to become a market maker. But there's still an unsolved macro problem. So let's take a look of, at a few examples and see what I mean by that. If we consider a DAO treasury for a second, um, there's still no user-friendly tools for a DAO to contract an outside manager, a specialist, whilst keeping full custody of the assets and managing that manager on a day-to-day -day basis. It is possible if you're like a smart contract wizard, but they're just the tools aren't there, the integrations that we need with Tally, Aragon, Open Zeppelin, and other DAO treasury management tools just do not exist today. There's also no easy way for a DAO uh, to access off-chain assets if diversification, like in the true sense, is something that they desire. There's also no way for DAOs to track historical and current on-chain performance in 24-7 real-time. Um, we have the tools to do that in the asset management sphere of DeFi, but we haven't built the link to DAO treasury uh, interfaces. And there are no sophisticated SDK and API to, which help automate strategies if that's something that a DAO wanted to do. Another example that I like to uh, focus on is quant funds. So um, anyone who comes from the traditional world will know, uh, traditional finance world will know that uh, quants like to um, build their strategies in Python. Um, and Python is largely incompatible with Web3 with Web and DeFi today. There are no backtesting tools available for DeFi or DeFi and CeFi strategies, which are also very popular. And there are no tools to aggregate DeFi and CeFi behavior. By that, I mean, again, historical performance, financial metrics, etc. So that's my second example. And my last example is a fund administrator. So for those of you who don't know what a fund administrator is, quick, like 10 seconds on that, um, any hedge fund in CeFi will typically have a fund administrator. And their job is to handle investments redemptions. Uh, their job is to independently check and verify the NAV. That's a legal requirement so that, you know, uh, there are no problems with the fund manager misreporting NAV and Ponzi scheme, etc. And also to check um, that the fund manager isn't misappropriating assets. So for CeFi funds, traditional funds that want to get into DeFi, there's actually no way 
um, to easily interpret histor historical trading data in DeFi. So it's difficult to see them easily getting in. There's also no way uh, for fund administrators to easily perform their governance and oversight obligations, which they are legally bound by. And also, fund administrators have to report um, to regulators, to investors, in specific formats. And those formats are not what we, or how we see things in DeFi. Sorry, that was premature, but anyway. So, <laughs> we, um, so we talk about composability and interoperability with DeFi all the time. But the question I have is, are we really delivering? And my view is, DeFi to DeFi, yes. To an extent, we can deposit ETH into a curve pool, for example. Um, we can then take the curve LP token, deposit it into convex, and then enhance our yield, et cetera, et cetera. So yes, DeFi to DeFi, composability, interoperable, uh, interoperability is great. It's a beautiful thing. It works. But DeFi to the real world, um, the examples I just shared hopefully give some inclination or some um, demonstrate how I don't think that we're succeeding at that. So I've talked a little bit about the state of DeFi and uh, how I think we're failing um, at bringing DeFi to the real world. So my question is, how do we aggregate these brilliant micro solutions into a macro solution that's coherent, manageable, and speaks to real world applications? I'm going to take a pause here and just tell you a little bit about the work we've done with Enzyme um, over the last few years to aggregate DeFi with DeFi before I get to DeFi to the rest of the world. So uh, Enzyme is a protocol that enables people to build a tokenized portfolio, manage that portfolio, and it handles all the operational and administrative elements of that. That portfolio can be for a fund, an index, or just for an individual or an organization. Highly customizable. And four unique features of Enzyme. The first is that it uh, is a tokenized representation of a portfolio. So when you deposit funds into your portfolio, you receive an ERC-20 representation of that, um, which is redeemable at any time for the underlying assets. The second uh, key feature of Enzyme is that um, we have spent the last few years building very sophisticated data pipelines underpinning the protocol that enable 24-7 real-time reporting, uh, which is verify, verifiable, auditable, um, but also historical reporting. And that's on any data metric, not just performance, but also investments, redemptions, management fees, performance fees, whatever. Um, and then another aspect of Enzyme is automation. When you set up a portfolio um, using the interface, you can configure things like management fees, performance fees. You can set rules around who's allowed to invest, how much are they allowed to invest, is there a minimum requirement, a minimum deposit amount you want to impose, uh, who is the delegated trader, what is, um, you know, any, any, basically anything you want. And all of these things are um, embedded in smart contracts and automated and enforced at smart contract level. So you get a really high level of automation, which brings down your portfolio management costs and makes you just able to focus on the thing you hopefully like doing, which is the asset management part. And last but not least is the security aspect. Um, Enzyme has a suite of policies which enable you to um, delegate trading to a third party uh, or people on your team, whilst uh, giving very stringent rules and instruction, rules and permissions on what they can and can't do. So whether that's allowed lists of assets, uh, DeFi protocols, or disallowed lists, or uh, cumulative slippage tolerance. So if they uh, consecutively do trades which incur a lot of slippage, you can stop loss them, PNL stop loss, et cetera, et cetera. Sorry, we skipped forward again. Um, anyway, so that's what we've been doing with Enzyme. Um, and as I said, um, that's been great for the last few years, but we're realizing now that if we want to graduate from our little bubble in the DeFi space and actually bring DeFi to the masses, we need to do more. And this year, we've been focusing much more on building out a tool suite for composability and interoperability with the rest of the world. That toolkit currently consists of three things on our side, Avangard Finance, although there are other people and other projects in the ecosystem building other tools, which I'll touch on. Um, the first uh, is the API, Enzyme API, which we just launched. The Enzyme API allows users to uh, extract data from the Enzyme protocol in a really simple way. 
Another uh, tool we've been working on, or a package, let's say, we've been working on is compliance. So um, compliance tools enable trading with known counterparties or assessing risk of pools before trading um, to enable more use cases than just DeFi, but also maybe institutional players, regulated banks. And also very recently, we launched uh, the first regulated on-chain platform for fund managers that want to launch completely decentralized funds, but with a regulatory wrapper around them. And last but not least, we launched, an, uh, we're about to launch, <laughs> we're still working on it, an SDK. Um, the Enzyme SDK allows users to build transactions and automate sophisticated trading strategies or, or just build their own front ends on top or, or apps on top of Enzyme. So that's the stuff we've been working on. Um, I will just uh, caveat that with there are other great teams in the ecosystem building great tools too, which I'm, um, I'm going to talk about one of them later. And just to zoom in on the API for a, a, a minute, because we just launched this a couple of weeks ago. Basically, the Enzyme API enables you to import your JavaScript or TypeScript project, uh, sorry, yeah, import data into your JavaScript or TypeScript product, uh, project. And the, the client package runs both in the browser and Node.js environment. There's two ways to use it. If you're technically capable, you can use the pre-built API client. Um, otherwise, you can send standard HTTP requests to the API. And the API enables you to fetch data on any on-chain trading data, uh, historical or current, in DeFi. And it's all standardized. And you can also use that to calculate financial metrics like NAV, uh, performance, sharp ratio, et cetera. And it also enables you to fetch data like assets under management, investments, redemptions, management fees, performance fees, um, and so on. Pretty much any um, events on chain that you can think of. So we've talked about uh, the state of DeFi today, and I've made the case, hopefully, that it's not composable with the rest of the world. I've talked about some of the tools we've been building um, to help aggregate, compose, and make DeFi more interoperable with the rest of the world. What does aggregation success look like? Um, that's what we're going to focus on next. So I'm going to revisit the examples I gave at the beginning and try to share how we see that. So for a DAO treasury, um, it's now possible with the API to integrate performance APIs from their treasury management, as long as they're managing an enzyme vault into a DAO tooling interface very easily, whether that's Tally, Aragon, or even your own kind of um, you know, DAP website. Um, it's also possible to integrate a module within enzyme to price off-chain assets where needed from a trusted source. Sorry. And last but not least, the, um, there are, um, we can integrate, uh, we can use the SDK to um, in, improve the user experience and interface uh, on, on uh, DAO, uh, DAO tools uh, to enable roles and permissions to be granted to third party asset managers whilst the DAO still f um, keeps full custody of the assets at all time. And uh, using things like um, stop loss or maximum cumulative slippage policy you can uh, have guarantees that uh, the fund manager doesn't um, maliciously or uh, accidentally extract value from the vault. The second example I gave uh, at the beginning was quant funds. Um, so there is a project in our ecosystem, a really impressive project called Trading Strategy, um, which have now built out a completely Web3 native um, DeFi Python package, which supports automate tra automated trading on Enzyme. And they've also, with that, provided sophisticated backtesting capability for more than 2,000 assets. Um, and together with the work they've done and the APIs that we're going to be providing them, they can now integrate uh, reporting metrics and historical data for quant traders in DeFi, whether it's DeFi to DeFi or DeFi to CeFi strategies. So this is another really, um, I think, cool way that we can expand DeFi into more than uh, you know, uh, kind of TradFi, CFI funds and, and strategies. And last but not least, um, I had mentioned the fund administration uh, example. Um, recently, when we launched our, for the, our regulated on-chain funds platform, we actually had to um, partner with a fund administrator uh, because legal requirement is that I don't know why it keeps jumping, sorry. 
um, legal requirement is that a fund administrator has to uh, independently check the NAV. So that required us integrating our entire system with their entire system, um, which took a few months, but now they're able to um, independently check the NAV by calling the contracts, uh, the enzyme contract, the, portfolio, the tokenized portfolio, and basically uh, verifying it against their own price feed. And they can perform their oversight and governance requirements because they know um, they're actually in charge of the, um, the parameters which the fund manager can, um, uh, which can be configured at the, the vault level. And they can also use the API to produce compliant reports as needed. So in summary, I think we need to stop thinking about DeFi as composable and interoperable um, because we're still uh, very early days in that respect. Um, and I think that real adoption is going to happen when DeFi is integrated in everyday tools and people don't even realize they're using it. So in order for that to happen, <laughs> aggregating DeFi is with DeFi isn't enough. And we believe we need tools to help bridge DeFi to the rest of the world. Our approach with that has been building out API, SDK, rap regulatory wrappers, and much more. And other projects in the ecosystem, like Trading Strategy, have been building out Python packages uh, for uh, quant strategists. So <clears throat> if any of you here are developers and excited by this idea um, of using these tools, we have recently launched a grants program um, and we're definitely interested in hearing your ideas of how these tools can be used to, um, uh, to, to uh, integrate DeFi with the rest of the world. Um, you can scan that QR code if you want to find out more. And also, um, if you want to learn more about the API, which we launched a couple of weeks ago, um, there's a blog post we published, and we're always really happy to speak to you about it in more detail. And with that, I'm going to wrap up. If anyone has any questions, I think we still have time. We um, have three or four minutes left. Is that right? We have about yeah. uh, five minutes for questions. Okay. So uh, here's your chance to ask Mona uh, any questions. And I'll call out uh, whoever has a question for you. Right there. Um, hey, good presentation, thanks. I'm just curious about like US versus European uh, mindset when you're building for compliance and you know, are you focusing on a certain area? Uh, where are you from? Where's the company based? You mean with the compliance tools or? Yeah, I mean, I'm most interested in the, the data, um, tra you know, the transparency that you were talking about for reporting, but I'm just asking like, are you focused on US or Europe? Or are you trying to cater to both? We're pretty agnostic. I mean, the tools, like we're just trying to integrate with as many, um, you know, real world apps, uh, apps uh, outside of DeFi um, or within DeFi. But, you know, the focus, I guess, going forward is more outside of DeFi. Um, we've certainly explored US based partnerships. Um, and I think the way we see it is it's, it's all tooling being provided to a lot of people in the US are already doing DeFi. So if we can provide them tools to just make their lives easier or to um, make it less cumbersome, um, and then that drives more people into DeFi because the UX UI becomes better, then that's something we definitely want to encourage. Oh, sorry, it's not my. Any other questions? Right here. Uh, so today, a lot of protocols who need to generate liquidity have maybe committees that are appointed by the DAO or other forms of kind of people making decisions. Uh, I think one, one use case for Enzyme could be running this kind of managed programs for liquidity. So do you envision like the tool being used by maybe committees running this or maybe even not having those committees from the DAO in the first place, but having more like yeah. Pushing that on external entities? The, the fact that you can um, impose policies um, which the DAO can agree on, so things like which assets are you allowed to trade, which protocols are you allowed to interact with, so maybe it's uh, Balancer and Uniswap, for example, um, or, and maybe Arrakis if you want to automate liquidity prov provision. Um, you could also impose like stop losses and things like that lends itself really well to being able to then delegate to a third party, which is still trustless, it's still non-custodial, um, but you're actually getting the efficiency and expertise potentially of somebody external who can manage your assets. And you know, we've seen examples like Avantgarde Finance uh, does some Dow Treasury. Um, 
management for protocols like Nexus, and this, is, this has been really useful. They can keep custody at all times, but just uh, delegate management uh, to, to avant-garde treasury for that reason, knowing that there's no way we can run away with the funds or misappropriate the assets because the appropriate policies are in place and smart contract based. I think there's one. Over there. Oh, yeah. um, I know you guys have a re regulatory wrapper for Bahamas. Um, are you guys looking at any other jurisdictions? Yes, we're working on several jurisdictions in parallel. Um, uh, you know, some are faster than others, like Switzerland is taking quite a long time, uh, but it's something that we've been exploring for a while. Um, we also are just setting up an office in the UAE uh, currently, so that's uh, where I'm going to be basing myself in two weeks after New York. Um, with a couple uh, of members of my team, and we've also been working um, in the BVI. I think I've covered all of them, but yeah, there's definitely um, an intention to experiment with other jurisdictions and see, um, you know, ultimately our goal is how can we give the best user experience to people, but still keep it regulated, compliant, because the truth is with passive asset management, there's a lot of workarounds when it comes to, you know, um, compliance. But with collective investment schemes, when it's actively managed, it's much more highly regulated. And that's why you don't see many actively managed products on the market at the moment. So that's something we've been trying to crack. We've been working on it for two years. Bahamas was the first one we cracked. Um, but we're very confident that we'll crack others um, in the coming Perfect. months, Thanks. let's say. Perfect. Thanks. Uh, we have a few more minutes here for questions. There you go. What, what's the plan for um, if a fund manager wants to use a centralized exchange, obviously because everything's on chain, and um, what's just the general solution for Enzyme for that? Yeah, interestingly, we've had a lot of people asking questions about that. And it's been a difficult one for us, because when you obviously go off chain with a centralized exchange, you're um, compromising some of the promises that Enzyme makes on uh, non-custodial transparency, Etc. Having said that, we've seen a lot of demand for it, so we are researching a module that will be available on request, hopefully when it's complete, um, which will enable, because, and, and one of the reasons for this, by the way, is a very, very popular strategy in DeFi is uh, arbitraging DeFi CeFi. And so there's no, um, if, you, if you really want to capture the market in you know, DeFi asset management, you have to be able to service both. So it does come with some trade-offs, and it might not be for everyone, and it will be probably an optional module subject to completion of research and development. Um, but it's something that we've actually spent a lot of time uh, quite recently on because we've seen a lot of demand for it. One, one more question. Here we go. Are you expecting, uh, how, how far do you think the decentralization uh, is going to go when it comes to asset management? Do you expect the demand to be more driven by individuals? or by uh, fund managers and institutions? It's a really good question. Um, at the moment, let's face it, uh, you know, decentralized asset management is a very small market. Um, and we're seeing that, you know, there's maybe two or three protocols that offer decentralized asset management. Uh, Enzyme, I think, is the largest. Index is not far behind, but that's only passive. And DHedge, which is active, which is much smaller. Um, but all great protocols um, and, you know, different chains and different, you know, um, uh, features. But we're all actually, you know, if you take the aggregate market of all three of us, I think it's like 170 million or something of TVL. Uh, obviously, that's down a lot from the peak, but still, it's very small uh, dot in the ocean compared to the asset management market. So I think um, the, the, the demand we're seeing now is, I guess, mostly from Dow Treasuries um, and... Uh, from small to medium-sized fund managers who have been blocked until now because of the, the, the legal questions around it. Um, going forward, I think, um, in order to bring more TVL into the decentralized market, you almost have to do it without people really understanding uh, that, you know, like almost like it, it, the user experience has to feel almost exactly the same as in TradFi. Um, because it's just, it's still a bit too complicated for a lot of people. They have a lot of questions. If you go to an allocator, uh, a fund of funds, for example, there's no way they're going to invest in a fund that doesn't have a DDQ, a subscription doc, uh, terms and conditions, all of this kind of stuff. And so um, this is something that we've just cracked. 
And I, would, I'm, I think it will be interesting to see how that changes now that this kind of option is available. Um, hope that answers the question. Great. Thank you so much, Mona, for your time and your informative talk. Thank you, Give guys. a round of applause to Mona.